Hi, welcome to my system here, Linux Mint. And we're talking about uh, Linux Mint 18.1, but on i3. So some of you have seen my articles on i3 on ericdubois.be. It's always interesting to see in life how it works. So I have started VirtualBox and we're in the process of making articles about Arch Linux. So this is a base system. It ends just before Xorg and X drivers, the, the graphics drivers. And we have already installed Budgie on Arch. So a copy paste of this one, then Budgie on it. Copy paste of this one, then i3 on it. And now the article continues. If you want to have Arch, Budgie and i3, how do you proceed? So we're gonna clone this Arch Budgie and then right behind i3. A full clone, otherwise it will uh, interfere. Gonna shut down some processes here. I don't need the comp time. Moving along already. I'm gonna save me some time here. So the copy has been successful. We have here Arch Budgie i3. We start it. It says host key right control. Remember it, right control and F, full screen, as you can see, it breaks things. And underneath there is this extra element here to start it. I'm gonna move this one to, for instance, screen five. With Windows Shift five, I'm gonna move it out of the way, so it's on screen number one. And we are now booting here budgie i'm gonna go again to the full screen and see if that's okay for this machine it isn't so under here or control f and it's back let's first log in so we're actually in budgie and we would like to have i3 installed that's the little project here you can see things have been installed already it doesn't move over the when I, you could set budgie to change the icons when you move over it and that's somewhere in here let's maybe show you that as well since i'm missing it <laughs> i th thought whoop, it's broken just didn't activate it yet so roll over mouse exit and yeah you have to close sometimes like so and then when you go over then it's the way i want it like so and then uh, i3, how to get it? Well, you go to Firefox or a browser you like. Let's move this one here, too important. Let's pin it, it's pinned. And then you do go to GitHub Eric Dubois. There you have it. And of course, since I've just uh, put it uh, online, it's uh, on top. So Arch Budgie i3, just search Arch. So this is the one we need. We can download it or GitHub it. So I guess you will probably download it. When you make a Git clone, then I can push back on it. But that's of course not for you Appli applicable, appliable. So we have here the contents of what we need to have and he, if you know i3 already then you see that these are the config files so this is the main file for your i3 so it needs to be moved so this all this of uh, should be copied or moved uh, so i'm gonna cut it and i have this i3 folder here which is yet uh, not existing so i'm gonna go to the home folder dot config there is no i3 so I'm going to create one, new folder, i3. And i3 is going to look in this specific folder for this, his config file. So if there's no config file, it says, well, there's no config file, I'll make you one. And that's, well, it's ugly as hell, okay? So it's not nice. So if you copy this config file, you'll see a lot of has been managed and changed already. So we've got all the data we're going to need. So he's going to read uh, the config file, that's one. It's going to read the Compton file, 
shadows, transparency, it has gaps uh, with, due to the config, it has also status bars you can change, this one, this one, and there's also a conky one, so three status bars you can choose from, and two conkeys you can start, and starting goes with this. Now, we're on Budgie, we have installed normally, normally, uh, I don't know, but normally um, you install Budgie in some manner, yeah? I have documented my approach of installing Budgie on Arch here in this article and in this movie. So many things that uh, the many things have already been made and have already been installed and scripts have been uh, run already. So this installation folder, the question is what is still to be done? Can I restart already? Of course not. So let's go over them. Let's make it a bit bigger. So if you want to change your arch mirrors, you can, you don't need to. So this is for Belgium, this is for the world, but it works already. So the need to install a graphical uh, program is not necessary. Maybe you don't have Packer already, that's maybe necessary to run. So Packer is an AUR helper. So you might need to start it, but I've already started it. So Packer is available. How do I know? Just press, uh, let's go to screen Windows 6, like that, so. Oh, sorry. Let's go to I can't change here. That's too bad. I'm inside the system, so I should put it here and then 6. No. Well, since we are in a virtual machine, uh, he doesn't know that I should get out of the control alt, I think it is. Let's try again. Otherwise, I give up. I give up. <laughs> so you can go like this, uh, open terminal, and then you say um, Packer. That's what we're thinking about. Does it exist? And yes, it does exist. So if oh, it's already installed, so I don't need to run it again. So there was this one. Of course, this one is necessary. Install i3wm core version 1. So yeah, that's uh, obligatory. So we're going to use this one. 05 i3 password done. He's going to get all elements. As you can see, there is a mirror error. So control C, control C, control C. Stop it, my friends. Okay, he stopped. Let's run the fastest arch mirrors, this one. Yeah, let's run that one to get the latest and the best of them. Oops. Arch mirrors version one. So not for Belgium, I'm gonna take the one for the world. It always takes some time Remember, he has to ping and test all these servers. He has to, has to wait for the response and then he has to order them, write them away. So it's working with Reflector, one of the packages. And we hope he does the job. There you see the measurements. Now he has to order them. Okay, I'm not gonna go do go through the update just not yet. Uh, we do that later. What I do want to do is running this 51, so the i3 wm core, and there we go. Mirrors have been updated. He knows now where to get it. It's going to install in G4D menu. There is a standard menu, which is the D menu. And the G4D menu is something from GitHub. It's an extra menu, which I activate with Windows Shift D. Normally it's Windows D. So I've added the Windows Shift D. So that's a secondary uh, menu, which is also in a different color to show you that those things are, are separate. 
and the G4 is actually working with the user share applications folder. So all the things in there are in the menu. As you probably know, there are a lot of programs in i3. So D menu gives you all the programs. So grep is a program, curl is a program. So everything is inside. At the time we're building i3 gaps next. So I want the i3, fine, but the one with the gaps. If you don't want the gaps and you did install i3 gaps, just put gaps on zero and then you see the normal i3 without any uh, gaps in between. You can see them here as well at the time and you can see the wallpaper change like so. So I like to move around and, and take a look at these things like so. Voila. And you see here control H as well. Voila. And then you can go and have a look at the wallpapers like so. Wallpapers are coming from Desktopper. This is Variety and the images are coming randomly from the net and apart from my own uh, directory on the Desktopper. Okay, i3 core has been installed. Let's continue and see what's next. So this one necessary, have to do it. 100, we ran it already in Budgie. It's there, it's all the software. We can print already, we have the sound, we have network. We have the extra software, Spotify, Sublime Text. We installed Teams, otherwise we wouldn't have Sardi here. We installed software that's distro specific. I don't think so, let's have a look. What do we have? No, we should run these. So these programs are necessary to work. So opening terminal. These are particular useful utilities to actually work with i3. So the Ubuntu family of the fonts, of course, uh, it's just uh, interesting to have, but it's not necessary. But other things like here, the player control is a little icon for your sound, but it's um, a kind of geeky, nerdy kind of icon. Meaning I have here this Bluetooth Bose uh, system here headset and well it works with streams and all that so I can select the correct stream from the little button. It's quite uh, ingenious, quite complex and easy to use. Just point and click and then you get a nice stream and, and you can redirect your stream to the correct uh, output device, in this case my Bluetooth. The passive tray is, is, is a beautiful thing, but it seems to be, well, an idea of the builder or developer, I don't know um, why and, and, and how, but we have two packages that arrive and the packages conflict with each other. So what I did is actually put a line behind the error and told him to look for a specific file and install it anyway. So this here, and the passage tray is installed, although it says here it has not been installed because of the conflict of these two. So you download something via Packer and you get two files. And you should do manually this one. Well, something similar. The numbers will vary, but uh, in the end, well, just remember it's installed, but it's, it's kind of a workaround I had to do. All right, <coughs> so that's this one. Samba has been installed. The personal settings folders are these things here. I like to have uh, them ready. The GIMP is color, I color not um, the theme and the scripts. The Arcolora is these blue colors. I can change them with Arcolora. I have 16 million colors. Eh? Hexadecimal figures, 255, 255, 255, you know, that's then RGB. And you can have uh, a script, you have a script on our Corolla GitHub and you can then change them. So a few of them have been made, so I keep them. And then the settings for variety, yeah, that's necessary. Uh, why? Because um, variety and i3, there needs to be a fix and it will work. So I figured it out that if I do some things, change some stuff around, then I can get variety to work on i3 
here we just have to move to it and scroll over it and the code the script that's behind it has to be old those not necessary this has been run already so when I do a screenshot it will be GPG auto login will not work since we have GDM as login as display manager so he'll end up there and this one we've done this one what did we do we downloaded the complete github and we put it in i3 we are in config i3 so not necessary and this is an issue for firefox if you use a user of firefox and a user of dark themes then you can install it and run it and you'll see that the input boxes box boxes will be readable and here are the r colora you can take a look a blue and a blue or a red and a takao so three colors, three variations. Actually, we're done. Meaning, I can reboot, I can log off. So, log off in Budgie is done here with this icon. Log out. But, I'll show you. If you log out and you check, you say nothing has been installed. What you really need to do is shut down and restart. And then we'll see in this little uh, icon there that i3 is included I'm gonna choose it and it's gonna look already quite okay uh, not like the clean install from i3 so we'll be using my config file in that way that you have already uh, a system that looks fine so i3 not budgy this time you sign in and there we go I didn't copy I did not copy my okay okay thank you I did not copy my um, personal config files around so that's why we have in well let's go over the numbers so one is Firefox it will be always on one two is sublime text it will be always there and then three you get uh, GIMP or is it Inkscape in Inkscape and four is GIMP Five will be all viewers and melt. Six will see. Seven is still optional or VirtualBox and VMware player. Eight is uh, Nemo. This one. Nine is all the mail stuff. Kiri, Evolution, and ten will be Spotify. So all these workspaces, ten workspaces of them, have. I have assigned some of the programs to some specific works workspaces so when I open something I know I have to go there you know now let's quickly go and, and change it to make it a bit beautiful what should you know what programs did we install in a distro specific Windows D remember and Windows Shift D um, specific is this Alex appearance like steak arc dark the cows which is an orange kind of look Let's take also maybe the Takao that is goes with it, Sardin Flexible Takao, which has these icons here. Uh, let's not apply it yet. Spray Snow, I want that as well. So, Arc Takao, color, you can't change it here. Icon theme, Takao, mouse, mouse cursor, Breeze Snow, apply, close. And now you have to rerun it. So, log off is, is enough actually. Windows Shift E. You press the exit shortcut, yes, exit i3, we're back here, still i3, okay, let's try and see if it has improved, and this is now our look in Nemo, so we have these orange icons here, not a lot of icons of course, because of yeah, the system i3 is not an, really, they don't have really a menu with all these icons, so you see some of the icons pop up but it's generally a lot of folders so this is a new look now you can restore it it goes so fast our uh, shutdown that Firefox thinks that we're crashed so sublime text is here what should you open or what can you open just show me your guys again that the config file is the most important one double clicking nothing happens it's not broken I told him if you open a file and it's with sublime text you go to here 
So you go to number two and here is your config file. Read it, read it, read it because this runs your system. If you want to change something, if you don't like Vival, you can delete it. If you don't like Opera, but I want all browsers to pop up in number one. I want all sublime text versions with all different kind of names and all this different kind of distros to pop up there. And if you're on Mist, uh, Linux Mint, they have XET, which is a text editor, brackets, text or code, atom, etc. Everything goes, every text editor goes there. And here's Inkscape, GIMP, and so on. So do check the config code because it defines your system. And if you don't like a shortcut, uh, like for instance, Control Alt T, it's a, a major shortcut. Well, here it is, Control Alt T. This is a uh, shortcut for the terminal. Right mouse click, profiles, and here you are. You can change everything. And um, you can change also the GNOME terminal. I see now that my transparency seems to work, which is great. So the Compton.conf, you see the one here. Is working. Let's Windows Shift Q this one. Quit. And here you see a config file. I have other Compton config files and I'm choosing and I'm thinking of, of changing them. So I'm testing them out on different distros. What is the best Compton file to have? And uh, well, actually, I'm at my end of my speech. I mean, you have your, ele your elements, you have your system, everything works. You can go and, and listen to my tutorials and you can also listen to any i3 tutorial. I want really to stress this so you know that any i3 tutorial will teach you something because i3 works on any system. I don't know if I have included this on this one here. I did not. Um, let me go you, to, let me show you this article that I've written already install i3 WN on Arch Linux and I think it's here voila so more information about i3 i3 desktop can be installed on many distributions I've written many tutorials about i3 any of all these tutorials are worth listening because it it's always the same it's always Alex appearance and also another one Windows 10 QT config qt4 is also a way how to show uh, some of the programs use gtk2 plus and then you have to change the font as well you see that in other movies and then save and there you go they have a beautiful color which is the same with the, the rest of it so enjoy i3 uh, have fun on arch budgie i3 and um, enjoy linux